Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good morning, John. How are you? Hey, Art. How are you? And thanks, everybody, for watching and tuning in again to Celebrating Act 2. As you probably all know from the title, this is the day we talk to Manny Pacheco, our Hollywood historian, my fan, my fun guy to talk to about movies in general. And, you know, Art, um, I was watching... What was it? Rudy. Rudy. The, Rudy. The, the, yeah. Remember that? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Sean Astin. Yeah. Um, as Rudy. And a great football movie. But it made me think of um, the uh, what What was the movie about the Gipper and the Four Horsemen, uh, the uh, 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 Notre Dame mm -hmm. movie with uh, Ronald Reagan? I, I bet Matt. Fun. Why don't we bring our expert in, Manny? Because you probably remember what that is. Uh, Manny, hello. <laughs> yes. Hello, Manny. I'm here. Manny, so, hi, what's, Manny. What's the, How are you doing? You want Manny. me to get right into it. Newt Rockney, All-American. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't Or as it. you would say in his country, Knut Rockney, All-American. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, it, I, those are my two uh, go-to football movies. But there's been a ton of football movies. And there was one, I think George Clooney either directed or starred in or both, about uh, pigskin uh, uh, when they had leather helmets. Mm. Right. I, I, you know, I'm not familiar with that the, one, to be honest. I, they called the leather, it was about the leather, five the leather heads or something like that. Oh, something the leather like heads. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But there's, um, been, there's been a lot of football movies, have there not? Well, historically, there has. It was a one, uh, you know, football's been used for a lot of comedy. Mm. Uh, back in 1925, there was yes. a uh, called The Freshman. We had a film, a silent film with Harold Lloyd. <laughs> You know, Harold Lloyd was bespeckled and looked like, you know, a, you know, like a bookworm. But truth be told, he, he was a very athletic, uh, very strong, loved to do his own stunts. And uh, this this suited him just fine. And so he was able to play very athletic uh, performances while still, you know, donning the speckles and looking like the everyday, every, you know, the boy next door type. The you know? nerd. Yeah, nerd <laughs> in a, and shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah. The nerd and shoulder pads. There he is. I loved, I love that Harold Lloyd picture. I saw it uh, not too long ago, a few months ago. Oh wow! I, and I thought it held up for a movie made in what 1930 something. 1925. I thought it held up wonderfully well. Well, then there was another 1930s film, of course, featuring the Marx Brothers, uh, Horse Feathers. Oh. And a, yes. Yeah. One of the best football games I've ever seen on screen. I mean, Harpo is just all over the place and doing all sorts of things you shouldn't do to a pigskin. Uh, all G-rated, but my gosh, it was a, it's a pretty good film. And it really does poke fun at the, the, the notion of playing football. So, Horse Feathers, you, you don't, don't want to miss it. It's one of the better Marx Brothers films for sure. Wasn't there also one, uh, I know there was, I forget the name of it, about the uh, walk-on in Philadelphia. It was about a real player who... Uh, uh, who uh, did a walk on uh, uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles? And was that a more recent film? Wasn't mm -hmm. it? Wasn't that a more recent film? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I, I remember that. I'm trying to think of who the individual was that played that. I know that. I, I don't want to mention any names. I, I'm trying to remember who was in that film, but I do remember that film actually. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure my friend uh, uh, Pete Moss, who from Philadelphia. Will uh, when we post this, we'll say, "Oh yeah, that's what it was." You should have known that. Uh, so yeah. we're gonna, this is for you, Pete. Uh, let us know it's what the, the film was. If you think about it, it's kind of amazing they don't make more football films. They kind of relegate it to the grand old game, you know, baseball and you know, wonderful films about boxing. But football, you know, you'd think there were more movies, but there was one television movie that probably. Brian mm. Song. Is really the go-to film, right. and that, as you mentioned, Art Brian's song, the story of Gail Sayers and Brian Piccolo, uh, Billy D. Williams and and James Caan, and just a remarkably tear-jerking movie. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, it it is such it is such a uh, ahead of its time. The idea that a, a an African American and a and a white football player they they get together and they become inseparable it's a story of courage fighting a disease it's a courage a, a story about social activism and, back, and of course it's a great story about football and recovering from injury i mean they really helped each other yeah. it wasn't a, a one way yeah. street and you know if you really want to tie this up 
completely uh, not too long ago we lost Gail Sayers as well. Yeah. So he passed away. So yeah, it's a great movie and it holds up really well. But you it, it, you got to have that box of Kleenex right next to you because I'm telling you, <laughs> if you if you don't cry to this one, you aren't capable of crying. Let me just yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I I was going to say I think football movies have been popular because they provide a screenwriter with a really broad uh, um, palette. To work from. I mean, you've got the action of, of the sport. Um, you've got the typical heroism. You know, I think of uh, Harold Lloyd. That was that played a, on the idea of, you know, football guys are big and tough and heroic. Uh, and he was, of course, the opposite, which is the, the basis for the comedy. Absolutely. Um, but it also gives, you know, there's the background of the struggle for an individual to achieve. So like all sports films, I guess, but I think football films have been, um, have been unique in that sense. You know, well, uh, the I, longest yard, uh, was also probably a more recent one, uh, yep. about, with Burt Reynolds or the Burt Reynolds in a, in yeah, a prison. Reynolds. And they had to play either other prisons or they had to play against the guards. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like, you know what's good about that movie is it really embodies the whole team spirit. I, I believe the guards had a new way of looking at the prisoners once they started playing together. They became yeah. close, and that's that's a really remarkable tale of of uh, you know trying to pay for your your sins from committing a crime and 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 then the retribution that goes along with it, and then of course the uh, salvation after the retribution. So that's really, really good. I thought of another film that we can't, we cannot not talk about. And that's the blind side. Mm. Uh, the real story of Michael Orr, who became a Baltimore Raven and what he had to go through. He was raised in a, 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 sub, a suburban uh, environment after, you know, having a very tough childhood in, in the projects. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, um, uh, an Oscar winning movie as well. So, I mean, Sandra Bullock, Sandra Bullock. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so the blind side is another one of those terrific movies uh, that we, we have to be in the conversation. Now let's turn this inward out. How about these football players that actually have, uh, had screen careers and there's been a number of them. Uh, Fred Dreyer had a real serviceable television career as did sure. Merlin Olson. Yes. Right. You're right. You're you, right. you might see Rosie Greer and a guest starring in a 1960s cop drama like Mannix. But, but yes. Rosie Greer, my favorite, my favorite uh, non-football role was uh, singing "It's All Right to Cry" on Sesame Street. Okay, <laughs> you saw, he was he was yeah. just absolutely wonderful. And uh, commercial, they did uh, Big Joe Green. Okay, uh, uh, Joe Green. That mean, Joe Green. Mean yeah. Joe Green, putting his oh, arm yeah, around. What was a Pepsi or Coke commercial putting his arm around the kids saying it's all right, you know? Uh, well, they updated it where the kid's grown up now. They've actually done a recent right. one where he's older and, and the kid is actually an adult now. Oh, really? <laughs> but if you're really going to talk about commercials, really, oh, who has but, better but legs to show off than Joe Namath? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? He did the stocking commercial, right? right. <laughs> So, you know, I don't know why football players lend themselves to become uh, screen icons, but it does happen. I mean, it, it happens very frequently. I, I've seen commercials featuring Joe Montana. Yep. And, of course, uh, uh, Peyton Manning is just about in everything. Right. <laughs> you, you can't go a day without seeing Peyton I would Manning. Say, in some I would say, uh, even though it's uh, uh, going to be controversial in this conversation or any other, uh, the one who actually probably did the most on screen was uh, O.J. Simpson. Uh, right. He, he was in a number of movies. The Hertz, yep. I remember the Hertz commercials and so on sure. and so forth. Uh, uh, but I, I don't remember anybody else being as as fully committed to that. Other than an amateur uh, a college football player, Burt Reynolds probably was the most successful screen. But he came from the amateur ranks, from the football. Trying to, yeah. Trying to think of the, uh, trying to think of the some of the movies that OJ was in. Uh, I believe in the Naked Gun series. Mm -hmm. But you know, remember him in the Towering Inferno. Yeah. He was in the Towering Inferno. So there, you, he plays a security guard. He huh. say he saves the cat of uh, of Jennifer Jones. He couldn't wow. save Jennifer Jones, but he saves the cat. Right. <laughs> 
So yeah, you know, football players, I mean, they're beefy, they're husky. I, I don't know that, they, but that, and you would think that because of their look that they would make great villains, but more often than not, they're heroes. I mean, Merlin Olsen was an absolute saint in everything he played in, basically because Michael, uh, not Michael, Michael Landon were, uh, sure. and he were very, very close friends. Right. So, uh, prairie, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you, you get you get Merlin Olsen. Yeah, Merlin Olsen had a 10, 15 year career on television. Yeah, I mean, he was very, very popular on television. So you get these actors and you get them, um, you know, starring from the football ranks. Oh, another one. Alex Karras. Mm. Wonderful yeah. as Mongo in Blazing Saddles. Well, also, he was in a wonderful uh, children's television series uh, for many years. Yeah. Uh, Oh, so I just saw I just saw uh, Blazing Saddles last night. I would I would have been remiss if I didn't mention <laughs> Mongo, just a, a figure in the pawn of life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that uh, we do know is that uh, uh, whether it's uh, any any uh, professional sports, uh, it's rare that somebody can have field presence and be a star there, but have acting presence of totally different skill sets. Uh, and yeah. absolutely different skill sets, but you know, it, any production is a team effort and so is football. So there is that mm -hmm. if okay. you think about it. So, so yeah, football is one. And of course, you know, um, what bigger thing on television every year than the Super Bowl? I mean, right. let's, let's not kid ourselves. That's the most watched, uh, uh event of any year. It's always the Super Bowl. So yeah. there, it, it, you have to think that there has to be a relationship between um, Hollywood and the NFL. It just has to exist, and it, and it does. Well, yeah, and all these actors, all these football players who have become successful actors, um, of course they were not hired because they were great actors. Right. They were hired for their name value. Right. Yeah, for, for the marquee value of being a, a, a football hero. But as you, we've just talked about, so many of them have become – really good actors and found a niche where they could become very, very popular in a whole new career. Who knew? Right. right. You know, that's a great, that's great considering some of the injuries, the head injuries that they, they suffer from, um, that, that, that they keep employed, they keep their minds working. Um, for many of the football players who didn't find a career after they retired, I mean, it, there's some very tragically sad stories that are told. And they're then they're coming out more and more each day. So, uh, kudos to the uh, to the football players who are managed to find uh, their way and and actually uh, continued their their stardom. And and that's a that that's a good story uh, that is surrounded also by a tragic story as well. Yeah, love love those football movies. I'll be looking for more of them. Yeah, I I that's enjoy this. I think we uh, uh, we scored we scored frequently. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, heard, I I saw a field goal coming from you there, Art. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure about it. <laughs> but uh, you are you are the star. And uh, if people want to learn more about you, where should they go? Uh, ForgottenHollywood.com. I'm writing blogs. Oh, probably three to four times a week. Always something new to find there. And of course, my book series, the Forgotten Hollywood book series, available on Amazon. Well, thank you, Manny, and uh, we look forward Good. to seeing you again. Uh, John, do you have any other, do you have like a, a less than a three, we're with, well within the red zone of the two-minute warning. We're in like the 30-second warning. Do you have, boola, boola, <laughs> boola, 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 no, I have, and, I obviously have nothing of, of worth. Say good night. That means we don't, the good news here is we don't have to go into overtime. Yeah, good, thank and you. we don't have, we have no timeouts left and uh, we've got, uh, we're just at like the 10 second mark. Yeah. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Art. Manny, thanks. <laughs> bye bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.